Hi, this is Jason Watt. Welcome back to the Business Career College video series. In this video, we're going to look at the tax savings on charitable contributions. I'm not a huge fan of uh, focusing on tax when we contribute to charity, but as the advisor, sometimes uh, this is something you're going to be asked to do is to help somebody understand the tax benefits of a charitable contribution. And I know for some people, it's a big motivating factor. Um, I'm going to borrow from my friend Kathy Hawksworth over at Edmonton Community Foundation. And Kathy likes to point out that people should support the causes they want to support. And then if we can find a tax efficient way in which to do it, great. But let's focus on supporting causes that are important to us first and foremost. So we're going to look at the federal tax rules for starters, because this gives us the easiest starting point. So federally, if you donate anything up to $200, you save tax at the lowest tax rate, that's 15%. That's the same as most uh, tax credits. So a donation of $100 saves you $15 of federal tax. If you donate over $200, then you're gonna have a 29% tax saving. So you would do then on a $500 donation, the first 200 at 15% would be $30. And then, you'd have 329% for another $87 for a total tax savings on that $500 donation of $117. And you can see what happens here. As you donate more, the incentive gets better because you're gonna have more money donated in that higher tax bracket. And then probably the most confusing part of this, uh, for those who earn in the very highest tax bracket, uh, over $221,708 federally for 2022, then a $300,000 earner donates $10,000. This person is clearly in excess of that 221,708. Well, they're gonna save at 33%. That's their top tax bracket as well. So they would get the first $200 at 15%, and then they would get $9,800 at uh, 33%. Okay, well, sorry, that should be a percent sign there, apologies for that. And that's $3,264 of total tax savings. Then on the provincial side, we would add in the appropriate tax bracket. So if you're donating the first $200 again, you're gonna have, generally speaking, the lowest tax bracket for the province you're in. Um, although Quebec's a little bit different here and in a way Ontario can be too. And then over $200, just like you do federally, you get a good tax savings on that, a better tax savings. And a couple of provinces, those being BC and Quebec, have sort of mirrored the federal system. They say, look, if you donate in the highest tax bracket in this province, then you're also going to get that highest tax rate savings. Now, there are some exceptions. Here are some additional rules. So Ontario, you might notice it's only an 11.16% tax savings on donations over $200. That's much lower than Ontario's actual top marginal tax rate. Um, but that's because the surtax isn't reflected in here. So when you take the surtax into account, then you do get a better tax savings in Ontario. And then also uh, Quebec. So Quebec, of course, um, has a federal tax abatement and if you're making those donations, then also your federal tax abatement is reduced by 16.5% uh, to make up for the sort of higher rates that Quebec gives on uh, charitable contributions. So to see a combination here where you get to see uh, federal and provincial together, I've used an Alberta example. Um, Alberta is pretty generous actually with a 21% uh, tax credit on donations over $200, which is higher than the highest marginal tax rate in Alberta. So you would have $200 at 25% for $50, that's 15% federal and 10% provincial. And you would have $800 at 50% and that's, uh, sorry, 29% federal and 21% provincial. So that's 50%, you'd save $450. Once again, the incentive to donate more is higher as, or is greater as your amount of donation increases. Okay, so then there's some planning we can do around getting the most out of our donations. First off, and I don't see this done all that often, but it is something you can do, you can carry forward donations. 
And this might happen where you have somebody who donates a small amount and wants to uh, carry forward some of that donation for a future year. So you can see my example here, would it make more sense to claim $100 in each of five years? So that'd be $15 a year, or to save that all up and then claim $200 at 15% and $300 at 29% and to sort of do that every five years. I don't know which would be better. You'd have to figure out uh, maybe there's some time value of money we could do around that, but it's, uh, it's at least worth considering that it is possible to carry donations forward. And the other thing, and this used to be a matter of uh, sort of administrative practice, and it's now actually in the Income Tax Act, is that spouses or common law partners can combine their donations. And I would suggest normally they should combine their donations. So I've got uh, Nick and Sandra, they both donate to charity in the year. Uh, Nick could claim his donations separately from Sandra, but they'd be doubling up, up on that $200 at the low rate, much better to donate at the higher rate. So either one of them could claim $200 at 15% and then $2,800 at 29%. They wouldn't uh, both be able to claim that. So they'd have to pick and choose who's going to claim those contributions. It doesn't matter if they're in Nick's name or Sandra's name, as long as they are spouses or common law partners. And then, and this might be why carrying forward is more attractive in some cases, because the other thing we can do here is, or the other limitation we have, I apologize, is we have a limitation of 75% of net income. So if you make $100,000, you can only claim $75,000 of donations. There are some exceptions around that, uh, exceptions in the year of death and exceptions for donations of cultural property and donations of ecological land. In those cases, you can go to 100% of net income, but in a typical year on a typical donation, you have that 75% limitation. If you did somebody who donated more than that, then they might look at using the carry forward provision and carrying some of that donation forward into a later year, or maybe having their spouse claim some of the donation. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Uh, there will be an advanced version of this video. We'll, we'll deal with capital gains and charitable contributions. There's a few rules to delve into there, uh, but this should cover the basics. I hope this helps and enjoy your continued studies. Thank you.